I got a great question from my cousin, actually, John. John is a national team rower. He's going to be representing the United States in the men's lightweight double this year at the World Championships in New Zealand. Uh, John travels all over the world, uh, obviously going to the South Pacific, in Europe, all over the U.S., Canada, racing at international rowing events. John asked, do they close off the course to cars much prior to the race? Are there a lot of people out doing course recon? At FISA, which is the international rowing body, at FISA events, training times are crazy with tons of boats and limited space. Is it like that? Yes and no. It is crazy, but they don't close off anything for us, uh, with the exception of the swim. The swim is protected. There's buoys out there. There's some fantastic local residents. They get out in kayaks every morning at about 6 in the morning. They're out there until about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. And they're out there just making sure that everybody's safe, keeping the sharks away, and making sure that we stay on the right side of the buoy so that we're not going to run into boat traffic. Beyond that, though, one of the things you have to keep in mind is it's a 112-mile bike course and then a 26.2-mile run course. And on an island like this, there really is only one or two major roadways that connect all of the cities on the island. So when we're going out for our training rides that run on the Queen K Highway, which run up the uh, from basically the south center uh, point of, of the Big Island up to the north center part of the Big Island all along the west coast. We're on the major highway that connects the upper city of uh, Waikoloa and Havi to the lower city of Kailua Kona. In between there you've got a couple major resorts and the airport, so there's a lot of vehicular traffic. Now one of the things that's great about Hawaii is there's a huge shoulder well-marked bike lanes, uh, well-marked bike merge lanes, and there's a lot of respect from the drivers. Uh, coming from New York City, I'm used to trying to dodge taxis, dodge uh, the pedicabs, dodge horses, I mean everything out on the roads. You're always worried about somebody cutting you off. And really here, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had a single bad experience. You get people that drive past and honk, wave, give you a thumbs up. They really seem to appreciate Ironman athletes out here, and they give you plenty of room. So, on the bike course, uh, you, you get a lot of respect from, from other cars, but you do have to contend with traffic, and it is a highway, so there are cars moving at 50, 60 miles an hour. The run course, uh, for the most part, well, it's basically split in half. The first half is in town, in the town of Kailua Kona on Ali'i Drive. We run out about five miles, turn on and come back about five miles. That is a road where the speed limit's only 20, 25 miles an hour. Cars are driving super slowly there, and probably 90% of people on the roads are Ironman athletes, either riding their bikes, heading down to the swim, going out on the bike course, or doing a run themselves. So not much to worry about there. The next eight miles out and eight miles back into town are out on the highway, the same place that the bike course is. So you've got a huge shoulder. Uh, you still have to contend with the cars. You still have to watch out for the traffic lights. but. It's open traffic, but you, you get plenty of protection, and it's a really nice road to run on. Um, the only downside is there is, as you saw from the video, no trees out there, and it can get hot. But uh, as far as, as training before the race, it just escalates. As we get closer to the race, there just is, it, it seems like it's exponential growth here. I got here last Tuesday, and it was calm. There's probably a handful of athletes out there. Already today, I saw probably 50 or 60 people while I was out for a two-hour bike ride. This time next week, it's going to be crazy. There will be hundreds of people out every day, tourists, spectators, friends, family, uh, expo vendors, and athletes. So it just gets crazy the days before the race. So last question for this first round of Q&A, uh, probably my favorite question. This comes from a friend of mine back home named Liz, who I work with in Pose Running. Liz writes, as someone who shaves their body to avoid scarring, why do you rarely shave your face? As someone who's just scarred their face, this is curious to me, and I don't even have a hairy face. Liz indeed does not have a hairy face, but she did just get in a brawl with the pavement uh, while on her bike, and the, her chin took the brunt of this force. So she's got a little mark. I, I think it's going to go away, but she's got a little ding on her face. So what she's referring to, though, for those of you that don't know, is that triathletes, and more specifically cyclists, tend to shave their entire body. Uh, the idea is that when you crash, not to be too gruesome here, but when you crash, whatever hits the ground is going to open up and it's going to collect a lot of the junk that's on the ground. So you hit the ground on your arm, your leg, wherever, and the wound opens up, the blood, the dirt, the mud, the pebbles, the rocks, all the junk that's on the road is going to collect in that open wound. The more hair you have on your body, whether it's your arms, your legs, your hip, wherever you hit the ground, the more hair you have in that spot, 
the more dirt and junk is going to collect there. Problem being, when you go to the when you go to the hospital and they need to clean you out, prevent infection, you've got all of this stuff in you. So the way that they go about cleaning you out is they have this thing that they call a rash brush, which is basically just a steel brush. And what they do is they will rub it along whatever part of your body they need to clean out, and it basically just rips the hair out from the follicles. While it rips the hair out, it rips all that junk out also so they can get it nice and clean, but it is not fun at all. It's incredibly painful. So to try to preempt this, you know, we never expect to crash, but bad stuff happens. We tend to shave our whole bodies. Now, it, it does pay off. It seems a little crazy. Um, and you hear people talk all the time about, is it more aerodynamic or is it more hydrodynamic or, you know, does it help you out in the, in the race? It doesn't do any of that. It might cool your body temperature a little bit. But the idea being, you know, last year I crashed at Ironman Brazil. I was racing there uh, May 30th of, of 2009. I crashed about uh, 85 miles into the bike course and I fractured my femur. I hit the ground at about 35 miles an hour. I slid for probably about 20, 25 feet. I ripped up my jersey, uh, both the top and the bottoms. I um, cut up my arm pretty badly where I hit my, where I hit my leg and fractured the femur. I cut up um, the backside, the hip, the knee, uh, my feet even somehow got cut up through my shoes, my whole back, everything got chopped up. When I went to the hospital, the process of cleaning everything out was as simple as just pouring some hydrogen peroxide or whatever they used to clean, you know, alcohol on the wounds and then just giving them a light rub with the cloth. If I hadn't been shaved, if I had hair on those parts of the body, they would have spent a long time going at me with the rash brush and ripping all that hair off. And actually when I got in the ambulance, the woman sat there next to me with this brush in her hand ready to just kind of attack any spot that had hair. And thankfully I was able to say, no, 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 everything's clean, don't need to worry about it, just rinse it out. So, to answer Liz's question though about why I rarely shave my face, um, I think the easy answer to that is in a lot of ways I'm just lazy. Shaving my face takes too much time and there's a lot less risk of hitting my face into the pavement. Um, I think Liz got unlucky when she ate the ground a little bit, but typically when bike riders hit the ground, the first thing we think of is protect your head. When I crashed in Brazil, the reason that I basically I hit the ground here on my forearm, then rolled onto my shoulder, uh, other shoulder, and came down on the opposite side of the body was that I was trying to protect my head. So the first thing that went through my head, the only thing that went through my head when I hit the ground was pick your head up, don't let your head or your face hit the ground. So the back end of my helmet scraped along, my back scraped along, both shoulders and the arms, the knees, and obviously the femur, the, uh, the hip, but I protected my face and protected my head. That's what we tend to do. That's why I, uh, well, that's the more complex answer to why I don't shave my face. But in all honesty, I just get lazy and I don't want to do it that frequently. So thanks everyone for sending in those questions. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed hearing the answers as much as I enjoyed reading and then answering them. Uh, keep them coming though. I'm gonna hopefully do a few rounds of this Q&A and be able to answer everybody's questions. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about nutrition, and like I've mentioned at the beginning of this post, I'm going to do a whole day, uh, hopefully tomorrow, on basically my kitchen. What I eat you know, now, what I eat next week, what I eat the day before, what I eat the day of, uh, what I eat on the bike, what I eat on the run, all of that stuff. So I'm going to talk through nutrition uh, over the course of tapering and then race preparation and racing. Um, maybe we'll even have a fun day and cover uh, what I'm going to eat afterwards because that's going to be impressive. But keep the questions coming, and uh, hopefully we can get a good mix of things. Everything from why are you lazy and you don't shave your face to what's the water like to how do you handle cramping on the bike. Um, thanks for reading. Thanks for sending all your uh, love and support. I really, really appreciate it. And keep the questions coming.